it's Miss Haley and here we are kicking off week four of our Vacation Bible School, our online VBS where we are learning together about Moses and all the amazing things that happened in his life. I'm really glad that you guys are here to join me. So um, before we get started with what we're going to learn about this week, let's do a quick review of what we have learned so far. And let's see if we can remember the motions that go with it. Are you ready? All right. So week one was God is with us, so trust God. Are you ready? God is with us, so trust God. Let's do it one more time. God is with us, so trust God. Week number two was God gives us what we need, so trust God. God gives us what we need, so trust God. Now you can do it with me. God gives us what we need, so trust God. Last week's motion was one that I really liked. Our key point last week was God is strong, so trust God. Are you ready? God is strong, so trust God. One more time. God is strong, so trust God. Great job. Wilson heard me say strong, and I think he thinks I'm talking about him. Are you coming to say hi? Are you coming to say hi to everybody? Oh my goodness, oh my goodness. Wilson loves getting to say hi to you guys. Okay, it's time to get down. Okay. <laughs> All right. So this week we have a new Bible verse, new scripture, and then a new key point for us to learn. This week we are going to learn about how God rescues us and protects us. The scripture for the week is from the book of Jeremiah, chapter 30, verse 11. And it says, For I am with you, and will save you, says the Lord. So our key point today is going to be God saves us, so trust God. So we're going to say God, we're going to take our arms and make a T or a cross, saves us, so trust God. And the reason I did this, like a cross or a lowercase t, is um, if you've ever been to the beach or to a pool where there are lifeguards, look around and I bet somewhere on a lifeguard's bathing suit or their hat or their umbrella or something, you will see a cross, okay? The job of a lifeguard is to protect you or if you are in danger, to rescue you and this is one of their symbols. So that's where that comes in. So God saves us, so trust God. You ready? Let's do it one more time. God saves us, so trust God. All right, are you ready to learn some more about Moses? I know I am. Let's get started. Okay, guys, now I am going to share with you our story for the week where we learn about the rescue or the saving part of Moses' story. So the biggest part of the story that we have been learning about Moses is about Moses and his people, the Israelites, escaping from Egypt. In Egypt, they were not free, um, but God had given Moses a command to take his people um, and to ask the Pharaoh to let them go. And when the Pharaoh said no, to take the Israelites and leave, which was a really big deal. Um, it was like they were almost running away. Um, and this was a big, a big scary thing for him, but over and over and over throughout the story of Moses and the Israelites, we see how God saves and rescues and protects his people over and over and over again. And this story is called God to the Rescue. This is from the Jesus Storybook Bible by Sally Lloyd-Jones. Joseph and his brothers grew old and died, but their children's children stayed on in Egypt where they became a very large family. Later on, a new king began to rule, but this Pharaoh didn't remember Joseph and he didn't like God's people. 
He made them into his slaves and beat them and made them work harder and harder. God's people cried out to God to rescue them. And God heard them. He remembered his promise to Abraham. He would look after his people. He would find a way to set them free. One day, Moses was looking after sheep when something caught his eye. A bush was behaving very oddly. It was flickering with flames, but its leaves weren't, weren't burning up. He took a closer look. So there is Moses and the sheep and the burning bush. Moses, boomed a big voice. Who do you think that was? It wasn't Miss Haley. Moses leapt back. The bush was talking to him. I have heard my people's cries, God said. I have seen their tears, so I have come down to rescue them. Go to Pharaoh and tell him to let my people go free. Moses was afraid, but God said, I will be with you. Just like in the scripture we read, read today, God said, I will be with you and I will rescue you or I will save you. So Moses went to Pharaoh. Pharaoh, Moses began, God says, God, said Pharaoh, <laughs> never heard of him. Moses kept going. God says, let his people go free. <laughs> Why should I, Pharaoh said. Don't want to, won't. So he didn't. So God gave Pharaoh 10 warnings called plagues. So think about maybe you are doing something that you're not supposed to and your mom or dad or a teacher, another adult starts counting and they say, I'm gonna give you till the count of 10 or they start at 10 and count backwards and you have that amount of time to stop doing something. This is kind of like what God is doing, except he sent what are called plagues. And plagues are a big mess. First, God turned the Nile River into blood. No one could drink the water, but still Pharaoh would not let them go. And this was a time where they needed the water from a place like the river because they didn't have a sink that they could turn on and get water like we do. So, God made frogs come hopping and leaping and jumping in your bed frogs, in your soup frogs, in your hair frogs, all over everywhere frogs. Make them go away, Pharaoh screamed. Then your people can go. So, God took the frogs away. So, there's frogs. You see all the frogs? And Pharaoh's like, hey, if you'll take the frogs away, I'll let your people go. Do you think he did? But Pharaoh changed his mind. You can't go, he said. Then God sent zillions of gnats. But still Pharaoh said no. So then God sent swarms of flies. Flies buzzing in your eyes, flies. So you can see all the gnats and the flies, all those bugs all over the place. And after that, sickness and horrible boils and huge hailstones and a storm of locusts. Then darkness when it should have been day until it seemed that the whole world, creation and everything was coming undone, falling back into darkness and emptiness and nothingness. So here's Moses talking to the Pharaoh. Do you think the Pharaoh decided to let the people go after all that? But each time Pharaoh said, make it stop and then I'll let them go. And each time when God made it stop, Pharaoh changed his mind and said, actually, no, you can't go. Finally, Moses warned Pharaoh, obey God or he will have to send the worst thing of all. Pharaoh just laughed. So God said, the oldest boy in each family of Egypt must die, but my people will be safe. 
God told his people to take their best lamb, to kill it, and to put some of its blood on their front doors. When God passes over your house, Moses explained, God will see the blood and know that the lamb died instead of you. That night, it was just as God had said. Suddenly, piercing the darkness, echoing down the corridors of the palace came a blood-curdling scream. Pharaoh's oldest son had died. At last, Pharaoh did what God had said. Get out, Pharaoh shouted, just go. And so here's Pharaoh and he's very angry. And so that very night, Moses and God's people fled out of Egypt and out of slavery. They were free at last. God's people would always remember this great rescue and call it Passover. But an even greater rescue was coming. Many years later, God was going to do it again. He was going to come down once more to rescue his people. But this time, God was going to set them free forever and ever. And that's the end of the story. I know when Miss Haley is reading that story or when you learn that story, that scripture in church or in Sunday school, it feels scary. There's some scary parts of that story, the frogs and the flies and, and the, the blood from the animal and the firstborn. Those things can be scary. And sometimes life can be scary and sometimes life can be hard. It's true. But the story reminds us that God is always there with us. God is always there to protect us and rescue us and save us. It doesn't always look like what we think it will. Because even though Moses and the Israelites, even though they were set free from slavery, they still had a lot of hard things ahead of them. But... Through it all, the promise of God is that God is always with us to protect us, to give us what we need, to be strong for us, to rescue us. Hey guys, I'm back again with our second story and it looks like Wilson wants to read a story with us too. Tell him hi, buddy. Boy, he sure wishes that he could see you guys. He wishes you guys could all come and throw his ball for him. All right, so before I share, gotta get down, gotta get down, okay. <laughs> before I share our second story with you guys, I forgot in my last video to review our Bible point. So in the last section of the video lesson, I just told you the story of Moses and God and his great rescue of Moses and the Israelites. So let's review our key Bible point for the week. God rescues us, so trust God. Let's do it one more time. God rescues us, so trust God. One thing I did tell you in the last part of the video is that God's rescue and God's protection doesn't always look like what we think it does or what we think it should. God's rescue and God's protection can look like a lot of different things. It might look like a lifeguard jumping in for a rescue. Probably won't look like Captain America rushing in to save the day. But the important thing to remember is no matter what God's rescue looks like, we can count on his protection. And to help us better understand that, I have a second story for you guys that I um, chose because it reminds me um, that rescue and protection can come in lots of different ways. And this book is called Tiny T-Rex and the Very Dark Dark by Jonathan Stetsman. I think this is a really sweet book. So here are two dinosaurs. He says, Tiny, it will be dark soon. Yes, Pointy, soon it will be very dark. Looks like they're in the backyard, maybe with some camp and stuff. It is 
our first camp out in the backyard and we are nervous. We have never slept outside before. Have you ever slept outside? We are mighty beasts. I am a Rex, Pointy is a Pointy, and Bob is my special squish. But even mighty beasts get scared if we can't sleep with our nighty lights. Maybe you sleep with a nighty light. Sometimes I do. <clears throat> when I am inside, the dark doesn't seem so dark. So inside his house, even when it's dark outside or there are darker places in the house, there's different sources of light. <clears throat> but when I am outside, the dark is very dark. Outside, there are no nighty lights to turn on. And when there are no nighty lights, the grumbles and nombies come out. I don't like the very dark, dark either. Mama says, there's always a light shining somewhere, Tiny, even in the dark. If you are brave and look hard enough, you will find it. But it's hard to be brave when you are scared of the crawly creeps. And it is hard to look for something when you have your eyes shut. He's afraid to open his eyes because then he's going to know how very dark the dark is. Pointy and I thought up a secret plan to be brave. When the very dark dark comes, we will be ready. First, we will build a hiding fort. So they've got plans for a fort. With a secret room, and a lake around the floor with sharks in the water. We will build a fort to hide our snacks and ourselves. And so here they are, they're setting up in the backyard. He said, this picture's funny. I don't feel hidden. Look, why do you think he doesn't feel hidden? <laughs> do you see, do you see his spikes? <laughs> Next, we will make special helmets to protect our brains from grumbles and zombies. Pajamas. His pajamas fit over his spikes. And he's made his helmet and he says, I need a bigger helmet. <laughs> the next part of the plan is the most important. We must hurry. We are running out of time. The crawly creeps are closing in. Tap, 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 tap. I hear the grumbles, they are close. So the taps are the mom tapping on the keyboard and the grumbles, it's the dad snoring. Run, pointy, the numbies are here. Crunch, crunch, crunch. And there's somebody crunching on a cucumber. He is so silly. And here they run, 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 run all the way out to their fort to hide. This is it. Our secret plan is almost ready. 
So remember, he's scared of the very dark dark, and so he's got all of these lights and light bulbs and lamps and lava lamp. So he's gonna bring the light outside to the very dark dark. Now we will not be scared of the very dark dark because we have made a super bright nighty light. Click. I think somebody just lit off another firework in my neighborhood. If you know anything about electricity and power, that was an awful lot of lights. Click, pretty lights, and then our plan did not work. The very dark, dark has got us. Looks like they blew a fuse. It was too much. Right, now what? I am scared. Pointy is scared. Bob is scared. We are all scared together. Maybe we can be brave together too. Brave enough to open our eyes. Look very, very hard. Look. Look at the stars. Look very, very hard and find some light. And that is the end. I chose this book because it makes me think of how the ways that God rescues and protects us, protects us um, don't, it doesn't always look the way that we think it will or the way we wish it would. In this story, Tiny T-Rex and Pointy, they wanted all of the lights, the light bulbs and the Christmas lights and the lamps. They wanted all of that to make the very dark, dark, very bright. And it didn't work. But when they paused to look, to be brave and really look, they saw the bright lights of the night sky and the moon and their own kind of light. It wasn't what they thought they wanted or thought they needed, but it worked just as well. In our lives, God's rescue and protection doesn't always come exactly when we want it to. It doesn't always look exactly like what we think it should, but we can always count on God's rescue and protection in our life. Just like Tiny T-Rex had to pause and wait and look a little bit deeper to find those beautiful, bright lights in the night sky. God rescues us, so trust God. Okay guys, now I am going to give you um, your two activities for the week. Um, your first activity is gonna be the same as the last few weeks. You Every week you have had um, a Bible buddy to help you um, remember um, our stories that we have learned from this week. And this week's buddy is Isaac. And Isaac looks to me like a little goat. So maybe you could think about Moses when, um, when God spoke to him through the burning bush. He was out in the field with sheep and maybe there were some goats out there, who knows? So uh, Mr. Greg is gonna put a picture here of Isaac on the screen. So this is Isaac and your parents um, know where to find the pictures of this week's Bible Buddy if you want to print it out or color it on an iPad or um, try to look at it and draw it from um, looking at it or maybe you want to trace it and color it. So um, your option for activity one is your friend Isaac here. Have fun with that. Okay guys, now I'm going to share with you all activity number two um, that you can try for this week. So what I'm gonna show you here is a way to remember that God protects and rescues us. 
So in the story um, that I read you guys earlier where the plagues happened, the frogs and the bugs um, and the sickness and all of those things, when those things happened, it happened to Pharaoh and the Egyptians. It did not happen to Moses and the Israelites. God promised to protect Moses and his people, his followers, and that's exactly what he did. So what I'm going to show you here is a way to help you remember how God protected them. The frogs and the bugs and the sickness, it didn't happen to them, to Moses and his people. So you are gonna need the help of an adult. You're gonna need some salt. You're gonna need some pepper. You're gonna need a little dish, like a small plate or maybe a small bowl. And you're gonna need a plastic spoon um, I'll go ahead and tell you, grown-ups, an actual plastic spoon will work better. I did not have any plastic spoons and forgot to buy some. Um, so I am using a plastic measuring spoon, um, but just a thin, cheap plastic spoon will work the best. And then finally, you're going to need some kind of cloth um, to create some static electricity, and I'm just going to use my shirt for that. So what you're going to do is you are going to take some salt and pour it on your dish, like get it in a little mound. I'm just gonna make my little, my little mound of salt here, okay? And we're gonna pretend that this salt is Moses and the, uh, not the Egyptians, Moses and the Israelites, or this is the people of God. And we're gonna pretend that the pepper is the plagues, okay? And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you, so in this story, in the Bible, um, the plagues don't happen to Moses and the Israelites the way that they um, do to the, um, to the Egyptians and the Pharaoh. But I'm gonna put the salt on, I'm gonna put some salt on top of, not salt, I'm gonna put some pepper on top of the salt, like, Um, like it's maybe the plagues on God's people or it's hard stuff or scary stuff or bad stuff, okay? And we are gonna show you, I'm gonna show you how God rescues his people, okay? So I'm gonna take this spoon and I'm gonna rub it on my shirt. You're gonna wanna rub it on some cloth. Try to build up some static electricity. You may have to do it, I don't know how long, however you want, however long you want. What's gonna happen is when I create the static electricity on the plastic, it will move the pepper around. It will start to move the pepper away from the salt. You will see the pepper start to get on the bottom of the spoon and it's like God is pulling away the plagues from God's people. Like he's pulling the bad stuff away so he can rescue his people. So let's try it. Whoa! So it's probably hard to see, but there was no pepper on the bottom of my spoon before. And then when I did this for a while and rubbed and got some static electricity, when I put it down here, it moved and made the pepper jump outward and it made it attached to my spoon. So again, this is like the salt is God's people and the pepper is, um, the, pepper is the bad stuff that, that was happening and could have been happening. And this is the protection of God, the rescue coming in to pull that bad stuff away so he can pull God's people or protect God's people or rescue God's people. Isn't that really cool? So that's that activity there. So make sure when you do this that you, that you rub it, I would say at least a full minute, really get some static electricity going. It's really neat. So um, anyway, I hope that helps you remember that God rescues us. So trust God. All right, guys, that is it for week four of our online VBS. I hope that you enjoyed our scripture and our Bible story um, and our book this week. I hope you enjoyed the activities. I hope that you will remember um, that God does rescue and protect us. Just like there's still pepper left behind, there will always be difficult things in our lives. And our rescue and protection might not look like what we expect, but God's rescue and protection, no matter what it looks like, is something that we can count on and we can trust that God's rescue and protection 
will come in his time when he believes it is best. And it will be exactly what we need, exactly when we need it. I hope that you have a great week and I hope that you enjoy this video and I hope that you will remember, no matter what it looks like, that God rescues us. So trust God. I love you guys and I will see you again next week and we will do our last week of online VBS. See you guys soon.